Hello, and welcome back to Weekend Cartoon Reviews. Sorry about that. Anyway, we'll be reviewing Under the Boardwalk. Now, I'm gonna go on a little rant here and say, and give my two cents on the whole incident with Paramount basically just sabotaging this movie. I don't know why this movie was sabotaged. I'm gonna be real here. This movie did not deserve the treatment it got. Because, like, this movie was supposed to go to theaters. Like, it was supposed to go to theaters, like, all the way back in 2022, even. Oh, my God. Like, yeah. At least I think 2022. And then Paws of Fury took up its date. And that was a horrible movie. And Paramount, you're not doing very good with original works. You're not. You're not. You have not been doing very good for the past couple of years. Like, okay. Ninja Turtles was amazing, but that is based off of a property. Like, your last original animated hit, from what I remember, was Rango. And that was all the way back in 2010, 2011-ish. Yeah, that was like a decade ago, man. Step up your game, Paramount. Anyway, let's not rag on Paramount anymore. Although, I do hate the CEO's take on original animation. Like, how it'll just keep going to streaming rather than actually going to theaters. Now, this did get a limited theatrical release, but there was no showing near me whatsoever, so, like, I couldn't watch it until, like, two weeks after its theatrical debut, and, which is, I'm grateful that it went to home, because, like, I was not, like, the closest theater was, like, two hours away from me, two, three hours away from my house, and, yeah, no, we were not gonna go out that far at all. Enough said about the whole paramount thing like yeah paramount just i just wasn't a good look paramount and sabotaging this movie certainly wasn't a good look either because it takes a little something called ahem marketing yeah marketing you know ever heard of it you can market your animated movie your original animated movie like you don't have to make an expense one hope people come see it it's called marketing marketing yeah, yeah, that, that, okay, for real though, enough about that little rant there. That was a little bit of a rant. Anyway, <laughs> what did I think of this movie? I don't see why it's sabotaged, it's good! Come on, man, it was a good movie! Like, I mean, I'm not gonna say that it was perfect, like, with Strange World and Ruby Gilman, yeah, I can kinda see why their studio sabotaged them. Like, Strange World was good, but it wasn't, like, so good, you know? Like, Disney, I still don't agree with sabotaging these movies because, you know, people worked hard on these movies, man. Yeah, so Disney didn't market Strange World very well. And yeah, it only made about $70 million as a result. But Ruby Gilman had it worse. And that movie, in my opinion, was just mid. I thought it was just alright. It wasn't my favorite movie out there, and it wasn't the best movie in the world. I mean, I know people wanted that to be really good and had, like, super high expectations for it because of what Puss in Boots The Last Wish brought to the table months before. But, honestly, the trailer gave everything away, so I ain't really think I was gonna enjoy this one as much. And, yeah, to be honest with you, I didn't enjoy Ruby Gilman as much. But, back to Under the Boardwalk. Of those three movies, this one is most certainly the best one. I know, the Paramount movie. <laughs> anyway. So, let's start with my positives first. Because, like, this is a musical movie, but I might as well say what the movie's about. It's about a hermit crab named Armin, who lives, who guessed it, under the boardwalk. <laughs> and, yeah, he, fi he meets this tourist crab named Ramona, who, you know, the two get together, they have chemistry and whatnot, and of course, I think you know how these stories go. Like, the focus is mostly on them two's relationship. That's where the focus mostly lies, on them two. But it, it, it kind of gives a message, like, it kind of reminds me of my favorite movie, Zootopia. Because, like, it get, does give similar messaging and, like... But I could compare it more to Elemental rather than Zootopia. Because, like, Elemental does its message better. It does the same message Elemental has, and that's fine, but Elemental does the message better, in my opinion. Anyways, so, 
other things I like to say, I liked the songs. It's a musical. Songs were catchy and memorable, you know, at least to me. Like, my favorite one was probably Line in the Sand, which will lead to one of my negatives. Like, I also like the opening song. There's, like, six or seven songs in this movie, and they're all pretty good. All of them, I liked all of them. There wasn't a single song I hated or just was like, Ugh, I want this to be over. No. And there are moments of comedy in the movie that I thought were pretty funny. Like, I mean, Elemental I thought was funny. Their comedy, like, not the jokes that appeared in Elemental's trailer, but I liked the jokes in El some of the jokes in Elemental that were in the movie. They were pretty good. But, like, the jokes here, they were good as well. Like, they aren't similar in that regard. And another thing I'd like to mention about its message, like, it doesn't sugarcoat it, it doesn't spoon-feed you it. The audience picks up on it. Like, I definitely picked up on what it was trying to do. Like, it doesn't say, hey, hey, hey. And it doesn't shove it down your throat either. It does not shove its message down the, your throat either. And it's pretty direct. Like, audiences and kids, I could see people picking up on the message. Like, it doesn't even tell you what its message is. It just lets you figure it out. Because, like, I like movies that do that. Kids are smart. They don't need everything spoon-fed to them. Kids are smart. Like, old animated movies, this is why older animated movies are pretty clever with their messaging. And the characters are good. Armin, good. The, his friends were good because, like, his, his, I'll talk about the characters now. Like, Armin is the main guy who, you know, meets the sea crab named Ramona and the two, like, get together. Like, and they're trying to find their way back home after a storm current. And, Yeah. Like, after a storm current happened, and then there's this asshole crab guy who, like, wants Ramona himself. He was funny, and I liked his voice. His voice sold the performance to me. It was a funny voice, and yeah. Uh, also, wait, wait, what was I going to say again? I forgot. <laughs> but yeah, they were trying to find their way back home. You get it. They come back home, and like... I'll, I do have some problems with the story, but we'll get to that soon. Like, after I mention this one last pro I have, like, they play with the setting quite well. Because their setting, it's on a beach, and the beach looks like a city. Like, it looks like a beach version of New Jersey. Because that's where the movie takes place, like. And then, on the boardwalk itself, like, it looks like New Jersey. Like, the setting is confined to, like, one or two areas, but... That does not hurt the movie at all, because it plays with its setting. Like, it plays with it a lot. And I like the way the world works. Like, the world works, it isn't complicated. It's simplistic, but sometimes simple is better. And here, that is definitely the case. Because it's a movie about crabs, and, like, the crabs, the two don't have to go on this, like, epic journey. Like, they didn't get stranded out in the middle of the ocean. Like, they're literally just on the boardwalk trying to find their way back home and yeah like there's a scene where they get stuck in a cage and they're trying to find their way out saying hey none of you are safe from here this guy's gonna kill you and all the crabs are just running around the boardwalk after they escape and there's another where armin and ramona are on a roller coaster like the movie's main focus is on them and then of course we get shots back to like you know, Armin's uncle, who lost an arm and explained to the guys at um, his nightclub that he used to be tough until he lost an arm. You know, it's stuff like that that's good. And, like, Armin's friends are kind of assholes in the beginning, not gonna lie, but they got better. I mean, they're better. And Armin also has a friend named... Fuck, what's his name again? But it's the Purple Worm. It's, like, Anemone, I think his name was. And he was a funny character. Like, he didn't appear much, but he was good. Anyway, on to the cons of this movie, and unfortunately, I have a few. The songs, well, I mentioned were good. I mentioned they weren't forgettable for me, and like each one, I did, each one, I didn't mind how long they lasted. Some of them use a bit too much auto tune. Yeah, and that kind of annoyed me. It's very noticeable on my favorite song, and like. I just don't like auto-tune. Like, it was just a little too auto-tuned, the song. Like, it's very noticeable when it's auto-tuned and when it's not. And the movie does have a slow start. Like, I'll be honest, I wasn't getting into the movie at first. I really wasn't getting into it in the beginning. But as the movie went on, I got more and more invested in the story. Like, Rumble, unlike Rumble, 
where like that which is another paramount movie i remember i really wanted to like that one and then i watched it and i'm like okay is this where the story's picking up but no it drops down five more things like for every one thing rumble got right it gets like five other things wrong then that's kind of the opposite here. When a movie gets one thing wrong, when Under the Boardwalk got one thing wrong, it gets like five other things right. And I was happy about that. And to my last flaw, it does do some of the typical animated movie stuff you'd expect it to do. Like, it does the death fake out, and I knew, come on, you're not fooling me. I've seen these tropes. Like, it, it does get tropey from time to time, and, some, and there's a part where, like, they seem like the characters are going to have the fight. The fight the fight that happened to like i think that's my least favorite trope in any animated movie is when the friends fight it's always annoyed me like even when i was a kid it annoyed me sometimes it's fine when i feel like the movie definitely needs it but a lot of movies i just find it so unnecessary to have in the movie but overall go support under the boardwalk it deserves your support go watch it and you're gonna have a great time that's it bye everyone and have a great day